Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice. Today, I wanted to talk about an upcoming series that is coming to Netflix that I'm really, 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 really excited about, and I think you guys are going to like it. So, the Lock and Key graphic novels by Joe Hill have been adapted into a Netflix series. The trailer was released, and baby, I'm fucking here for it. If you're into horror or fantasy, then this might be your jam. So, Joe Hill is the bomb, like, in his own right. He wrote Horns and Heart Shaped Box, which I really love, amongst many others. He also co-authored the short story In the Tall Grass that was adapted by Netflix with his daddy, Stephen King. He's the Horror King's son. The Horror King, not the Horror King. And he authored this amazing story. And let's just say that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Fookin' legend. The series comes out February 7th and in this video I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of the trailer and the story with as minimal spoilers as possible and then you can decide if Lock and Key is something that you will want to watch, listen to, or read. You can click my Audible link in the description box and you can sign up for the Audible trial and get the entire Lock and Key six volume set for free. And it's not just someone reading the books, it's like a play like it's a legit there are multiple voice actors and actresses and music and sound effects and it's pretty dope and you can get it for free with my audible trial link and I get some coins and we all make it out but let's get into it so there are six books or graphic novels or comics whatever you want to call them call them whatever you want so in present day there's this huge tragic event which is set in motion all the events of this story and the father of the Locke family, Rendell Locke is dead. And the Locke family have moved across the country from San Francisco to Lovecraft, Maine into the Key House. The Key House is a huge mansion that's been owned by the Locke family forever, for decades. Rendell Locke told his family if anything ever happened to him to go to the Key House and they would be safe there. Bitch. Anyway, the family relocates to the house, but they know nothing of the dark power that resides there. So the main protagonist of the story is the Locke family, Tyler, Mackenzie, and Brody. And I guess their mother, Nina, their father's brother, Duncan, is also a part of the Locke family. And he has a big role throughout the story. This is like a dark story. It's magical, but there is gore. There is violence. It's horror. And it's not just like a regular horror. It's good horror. I just, why the fuck am I saying horror like that? I don't know. It sounds, keeps, keeps like, sound like I'm saying horror. But it is good horror. It's not that jump scare bullshit. Literally, some of the scenes are bone chilling. So what's up with Key House and what's up with the keys? So the backstory to Key House kind of unfolds from the beginning to the end of the story with most of the backstory being told in volume five clockwork. So way back, 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 Back in the day, like a revolutionary war type shit, a portal is discovered where Key House is now built. The portal is to another dimension, a dimension populated by demons. The demons can hypnotize you and like make you do whatever they want you to do. And they can possess your body just by touching you. However, if they try to leave their demonic dimension, which is called the Plains of Lang, and cross over to the human world through the portal, they turn into Whispering Iron piles of whispering iron. So Benjamin Locke, an ancestor to Kenzie, Brody, and Tyler, decides to take this magical whispering iron and use it to forge these magical keys. This portal is called the Black Door, and Benjamin Locke made a key to seal this portal called the Omega Key. The Omega Key is the first key ever created, and it was created in 1775. The Omega Key is by far one of the most important keys in the whole story but there are some wild keys in this house and the story is dark as fuck the thing is the family is moving into this house and they know nothing about the keys and the way the house works is like once you become an adult you forget about the keys and the magic of key house so everyone is basically oblivious and fumbling their way through life at key house not understanding shit about what's going on around them so i'm not going to talk about all the keys, just the keys that were shown in the trailer. The first key we see used in the trailer is the ghost key. We see Brody 
get the ghost key and we see Brody use the ghost key. When the ghost key is used in the right door, your soul leaves your body and you can become a ghost. Another key that is featured in the trailer is the head key. The head key literally gets put into your head and your emotions, memories, and thoughts can be removed, swapped, or exchanged. The emotions are like tiny people. So for example, Mackenzie wants fear to be removed from her. So she goes like in her own head and extracts the tiny person or voice in her head that causes fear. The head key can also be used to like download shit. For example, Tyler needs to do some reading for school, but he doesn't want to read the book. So he downloads it. Instant superficial knowledge. Also, there is the shadow key. In the trailer, when you see the shadows on the walls, it looks like someone has used the shadow keys. So there is a room that houses the crown of shadows. And if you have the key, the shadow key, you become the shadow master and you can control shadows, which are kind of like ghosts, and you can command them to do shit for you. You can also deter the shadows with light. There are tons of keys all throughout this house. Keys that do extraordinary things. Keys that the Locke family is uncovering and using and someone somewhere wants these keys. There are outside forces and inside forces that are trying to get the keys from the lock family. If I get into the who, what, and why, it's spoilery, like too spoilery, and I'm not trying to be too spoilery. I want you to experience these novels yourself because I think they are absolutely amazing. But what I can say is this story is not in chronological order. And there is a lot of times when we go back in time, like sometimes we go way back into the past. And then sometimes we just go back to 1988 to when Rendell Locke was a kid, because something happened in the past that is very important to the present storyline. Also, all parts of this story do not occur at the key house. This is not just another Haunted Mansion story. This isn't like anything that you've ever seen. It's not like fucking Whipstaff and Casper the Friendly Ghost and or, or Skeleton Key. It's not like that shit at all. Tyler and Kenzie are high school teenagers and they have friends and they go to school. So we spend some time at their school. Uncle Duncan, um, he has his own house with homophobic neighbors. The story spends some time in a juvenile detention center and a cross country homicidal spree. Bodie is the baby brother. He's six years old. Like I fucking love Bodie. Do you hear me? Brody learns about the keys first and he tries the first key and no one believes him when he tells them what happens. And with the head key, their mom is right there when they open Brody's head, but she doesn't believe it or see it because she can't because she's an adult. This clip from the trailer is definitely the inside of Brody's head. There are also like other things going on. It's like a family dealing with the tragic loss of their father and moving across country. A mother dealing with alcohol issues and splintering is happening amongst the family. It's a rich story. There's a ton of character building going on all throughout the story. There are subplots and counterplots and there are shocking twists and turns around every corner. The trailer was amazing and it looks to be a faithful adaptation so far. The trailer opens up with the Locke family Family arriving to Key House in Lovecraft, Maine. Nina Locke, the mother of the family, is saying that Rendell would never talk about Key House or his childhood there. There is a shot of Brody going into the well house. The well house is another part of the Key House mansion with like undrinkable water because that makes all the fucking sense in the world. There is a shot of Brody hollering into the well and asking if the person inside is his echo. And a woman says yes. Clearly that can't be his echo because it's just clearly can't be. But there is an echo key or a wellhouse key that we will learn about as the story progresses that is really important. There is also a montage of Brody finding the ghost key and the door that the key goes to and Brody actually using it. Shots of what happens before they even move to Lovecraft and the music box filled with keys. 
The music box itself has its own key that does some Professor X type shit. There are scenes of Brody running from the shadows and Kenzie and Tyler running from shadows. The Omega key is also shown and they show the Omega door and them opening the Omega door, which I'm thinking this means they're must gonna be doing the whole graphic novel series in one season beginning to end one season 10 episodes I don't know how they're gonna do it but I'm super excited and I think this has potential to be the best series you will see in 2020 on Netflix period and that's saying a lot considering The Witcher was really fucking good and if you watch the trailer all the way to the end there was a website hidden in smoke rendolockasdead.com and it redirects you to a clip of the first two minutes of the series and the key that the guy has is a key that you see later on in the music box and just the cinematography and everything looks so good I'm really happy with the castings I, I just like I I cannot wait. This will not be your run-of-the-mill haunted house story. This shit is scary, like real scary. I will be covering the series. If the series interests you, be sure to sign up for the Audible free trial and get the six books set for free. Link in the description. Please leave me your questions and comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.